first six videos in this series focused on topo map symbols that describe the natural world. Hikers also need to know map symbols for cultural features. Let's start with this map segment. The continuous red line outlined in black indicates a paved highway. At the time the map was made, this road was considered a primary highway. On this map segment, the highway symbol is slightly different. It's still outlined in black, but instead of a continuous red line, you have alternating sections of red and white. Back when the map was made, this road was considered a secondary highway, but it was still a paved road and suitable for any kind of car you might happen to own. If the road is indicated by two continuous parallel lines with no red, that's a light duty road. The surface is prepared, but it's not paved. You can think of it as a better than average dirt road. Depending on how carefully the road was made, when it was last graded, and whether it rained or snowed recently, jeeps might struggle to get through. Even on good days, it's not a place to drive a low-slung sports car. Here's what a light-duty road looks like. This one is graded and has drainage ditches, but parts of it could wash out after a single heavy thunderstorm. If you watched the previous videos in the series, you're familiar with this map segment showing Calaveras Canyon. The red arrows point to something you may not have noticed, namely, a light-duty road snaking its way up the west edge of the map segment. In fact, it's the access road for the Calaveras Canyon hike I describe on my website. When you see two parallel dashed lines, that's an unimproved road. Out west, a common name for this kind of road is two-track. Here's a classic two-track that I hiked recently. It looks fine right here, but the initial sections of the road were too rough for passenger vehicles. Instead, we parked just off the access road and included the rough sections in the hike. Two tracks are great for walking side by side, so you can talk to a hiking buddy as you go. When two tracks get wet, they can become mud pits. If you're already hiking by this point, it's easy to walk around. Since my goal on hikes is to relax, get some exercise, and enjoy nature, my instinctive response to two tracks is to stop driving and start walking. Let's head back to Calaveras Canyon. The blue arrows point to two tracks on the ridges flanking the canyon, as well as one in the valley to the east. Sometimes you'll see a single dashed line marked Jeep Trail or something similar. These trails were made by people who saw damage to their vehicles, or more likely their boss's vehicles, as an acceptable business expense. A trail like this may not be a good place for that shiny new Jeep Wrangler you love as much as your mom. Besides, these least carefully made of all roads deteriorate quickly to where they're not usable at all. I'll provide a concrete example. According to this map, there's a Jeep trail up Schoolhouse Canyon in the Hemis Mountains. This photo looks down Schoolhouse Canyon, and you can see the Jeep trail. It was cut by a bulldozer, and this section doesn't look so bad, but years of erosion and fallen trees and new plant growth have made most of it impassable, even for a jeep. In response, the Forest Service has closed it to motor vehicles, and the only people using it today are occasional hikers. For hikers and horseback riders, single dash lines are more important when they indicate non-vehicle trails, such as these ones in the Manzano Mountains. Typically, a trail looks like this. Just like the Jeep trails, if they're not maintained, they tend to disappear quickly. Also, agencies often realign trails as part of long-term maintenance. I'll describe a couple of map symbols that might not seem worth knowing, but are. This map segment shows three electrical power lines that converge on a substation. The symbol is hard to see, so I inserted a drawing. Look for dashed lines with occasional dots, which I think of as symbolizing power poles. Power lines are important for hikers because if you get lost in the woods, you can follow them back to civilization. For example, if you're lost but you know that you're east of a power line, you can head west until you find the power line, then follow it out of the woods. Pipelines are marked by single lines of dashes, just like trails, but the word pipeline should also appear on the map. Also, pipelines tend to be straighter than foot trails. Like power lines, pipelines are a good escape route if you get lost. Better, in fact, because power lines can leap up and down cliffs and across canyons, but pipeline routes almost always allow continuous foot travel. Buildings are indicated in solid black. When buildings are large, their shapes are shown, but small buildings are indicated by tiny black squares. 
I've seen hollow rectangles to indicate outbuildings. Schools have little triangular flags, and houses of worship have tiny crosses. For urban areas, it's common to indicate a few major buildings and to show the rest of the area in a solid peach color or in gray. Some of this urban area is shown in purple instead. Anything in purple was added after the original map was made. The purple changes were based on aerial photographs and only spot checked on the ground. If an area changed rapidly, you may find yourself holding a topo map with a lot of purple on it. On this map segment of Cabazon Peak, the only thing in purple is the two-track indicated by the arrow. Clearly, this area changed very little between when the map was first made and when it was revised. Let's look at a different map segment at the west edge of the Ojito Wilderness and see what cultural features are present on the landscape. The arrow points to a two-track that ends at two cultural symbols. I'll zoom in on them so you can see them better, even though that makes the image blurry. One symbol is a tiny square, the other I haven't explained yet. As I said, the tiny square represents a small building. And this is the building shown on the map, or at least what's left of it. It's more or less square, like the symbol, but even if it was some other shape, a building this small would be shown as a square. The other symbol looks a lot like a teepee with a TV antenna, but it indicates a windmill. Here's the actual windmill, which is out of use but still standing. Out west, windmills are important landmarks in flat terrain, and if they're working, they can mark sources of water. But as they fall down, or are taken down, the windmills shown on maps no longer correspond to anything you'll see during your hike. Let's work this map segment a little more and reinforce what you learned earlier in the video. The red arrow is pointing to a power line. This road is so straight because it follows a gas line, but the gas line isn't indicated on the map. The road is shown as unimproved, but these days it's a frequently graded light-duty road and passable for most vehicles in good weather. All this is a reminder that your best bet is to combine map information with local knowledge. If you don't have that local knowledge yourself, it's good to ask or hike with someone who does. Here the red arrow points to a road that branches off the gas line road. The side road was unimproved when the map was made, and it's unimproved today. To get to this edge of the Ojito Wilderness, I drive my Forester as far as the power line, but then I park and hike the remainder of the two-track. As the section lines tell you, that adds just under a mile to the hike each way. I've now spent seven videos going over symbols on standard U.S. topo maps. I need to remind you that maps are not perfect images of the planet. Map makers sometimes make mistakes. More seriously, the world keeps changing after a map is made, so every map is doomed to become obsolete. Natural features usually change slowly, but cultural landscapes can change radically in a few decades. For example, this map of Taos is hopelessly out of date. Using topo maps will make you a much more savvy hiker, but don't bet your life on their accuracy. One last thing. I've described topographic symbols that every beginner needs to know, but there are many more symbols than the ones I mentioned. Depending on where you hike, you may need to know symbols that never came up in this video series. Fortunately, there's a master guide to the symbols on standard U.S. topographic maps. It's available online as a PDF, and I'll provide the URL in the description box. I'll be doing more videos in this series, but from here on out, I won't explain the symbols on maps. I'll assume you know what they mean. It helps to watch instructional videos to attain basic map literacy, but you won't master the art until you start using topo maps on actual hikes.